very much for coming down. Appreciate you taking a bit of time out of your busy day. I know you're a busy man. Yeah, especially this time of year, coming up to Christmas is my busiest. I say it's my busiest and my fattest time of the year. Okay. Because I do the least exercise and the most okay. work. All right. Steven, I met Steven at Power Video last year. We sat and we got talking. I just sort of followed him on Instagram and it's given me a, a behind the scenes insight into what you do and I am hooked. He's one of the guys I watch every single day and just laugh at continually. With, laugh with, and laugh at, laugh at. I think it's a bit, bit of both. A bit of both. Yeah, fair enough. Steven runs a company called Grafters Media and it's all about film production and a lot of animation and stuff. So tell us, what is Grafters? When did it start and what's, why? why? Why did you decide to do it? Well, my background was in web design and graphic design. Okay. And I kind of joke that I'm a recovering web designer. Always had an interest in filmmaking. And then two years ago, um, I got an opportunity to do a Christmas promo film for Balamina. That was okay. the first proper commercial video I'd ever done. Right. Basically spent three months making this, this video too. It was worked on it. It was really successful. And then that made me realize I really want to be doing video. So that was two years ago and I pretty much switched in two years from primary graphic design and web design over to video production. I guess what I want to do the most is commercial videos that are not um, a CEO sitting talking and then B-roll of the company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, if possible, I would try to say to the client, look, can we do something that's got a bit of an art of here? Yeah, yeah. Um, can we do something with a bit of a story? So if you could make little mini movies for your commercial videos, that's what I'd like to do the most. Not every project works out that way. Yeah, online, online, online ads, online videos, people pay 18 times more attention than they do TV. Right, yeah, that's mad. But it costs about 10,000 pounds to put a 20 second ad on local TV Yeah. 20 yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That online, you cover the entire population. You're planning stuff to put on like video on demand on a player? Mostly, or talking mainly about yeah, social? mostly social media. Um, projects tend to be tailored to clients. Not everything's going to be a little narrative piece. Yeah. Um, it, it depends on what it is. I did, a, I did a, a suite of videos recently for um, an optician. And originally we were going to do two videos all about the opticians, all about their history. Yeah. I saw you filming and, that. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And showing some B roll. And then we had the idea hold on, this is going to social media. We want to get views. So we come up with the idea, let's film a series of questions people always want to be asked to opticians. So we went around the streets, got random people from around Balmina. Then I asked the questions to the camera, and then we filmed the reactions of all the staff. Um, oh, cool. And then cut them all together. Well, some of them are really funny, some of them are quite serious, 30 second long videos. Okay. So they can be dropping these out over the next six yeah. six months. That's And that's the key right there, isn't it? All days of like linear sort of advertising, you make a TV ad, that's it, boom, it's out, it's done. Yeah. And now you, create, you can create like a main video and then all these little sub videos from that. Yeah. But you seem to be a very hands-on guy and that is uh, what I find compelling about you. So I watch all of these Insta stories and when I'm watching your stories and you're taking us through the things you're doing, it's, it's the fact that you're physically doing it. So you've, yeah. you've been making handmade models, you've been filming stuff, time-lapse yeah. things, you've been, you've been building your own studios and chemical labs to build <laughs> your own models and stuff. Yeah. What's, why? Why do you decide to do that instead of outsourcing things like that? I blame my dad for that one. But the, way, the way I sort of brought up was always, if you can figure out how to do something, you can, you can do it. My parents are both quite creative. Okay. My dad would always have built models of stuff. My mum's like a seamstress. You know, I always grew up playing plaster scene or trying to build build stuff. Yeah. And when I went to school, I was really interested in technology and always wanted to make like products. Right. But so I actually ended up going to do this like technology degree, useless electronics. So I kind of okay, okay. killed that. But now I find all these things I learned have come in useful for um, for making like characters and things for movies. Right. And most of that practical stuff is all around Christmas because the last two years I've done Christmas films for Bellamina. And I really wanted to do character driven pieces. Okay. Because there isn't a massive budget, yeah, I can't yeah. outsource it. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the stuff's been done completely by hand. So I'm using a combination of stop motion, special effects, like practical special effects, and then digital special effects. So I'm just figuring out how to do the whole thing myself. Brilliant. So from scratch, I've had to figure out how to make stop motion puppets, how to cast plastic bodies, how to sculpt them in the first place. But I have, I do get assistance with that. My my sister works with me, okay. Naomi, uh, and she's she's an artist. So she would, I would do like really terrible stick man storyboards, and she would make them look good. Okay, cool. Um, and she's also helped with modeling. So uh, either myself or her have made a, a model out of clay, coated it in silicone, left it for seven hours, cut the model out, or just a piece of the model. You take it out, 
you mix chemicals depending on what you want, depending yeah. on whether you want plastic, do you want foam uh, or do you want rubber. You pour it in, you wait like half an hour, then you pull out the piece, sand it down, finish it. So I had these ideas in my head, these really cool looking characters, and they're not just parts you can buy off a shelf, they're completely bespoke. So I thought, right, I've got YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I found a contact locally who supplies the materials. So I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to do yeah, this yeah. myself. Yeah, I'll yeah. find out pretty quickly if I can't. If you can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And then at that point, you got to break down uh, <laughs> or find someone who can help. Yeah, yeah. But well, the whole plan changes slightly. Yeah. 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 That is kind of what appeals to me about you. Because like, I always describe myself as a, as a creative problem solver. And it's not every problem, but yeah. creatively, that's the way I operate. So when I watch you do stuff, I'm just like, that is, that's what I believe is the way to do it. Someone's coming to you and saying, Steve, can you make us a film? And you're going, yeah, I'm going to give you the package. Uh, there's so many ways, it's so easy to get like stacks of people involved in the project. But I love the fact that you're like, you're starting here, I need to get here. And you work, how do I get there? And you're working backwards. And that's what I love. Like watching your Instagram, watching when you take us in the back and you're hacksawing something, you're welding something here, you're melting these things, it's going wrong and you're showing Melting holes in the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're taking us through it. What impact do you feel Instagram has on your ability as a filmmaker? You know, how do you feel like find that fits in with what you do in your Instagram stories? Mm. For me, I think the Instagram stories are a creative outlet. Okay. And you can tell when I'm having a good day and having a bad day. When I'm having a bad day and I'm stressed, there's nothing. Okay. It's just blank. Okay. When I'm having a good day and stuff's going well, that's when I tend to post stuff. Because okay, yeah. that's when I'll have ideas bouncing around in my head. I think Instagram should be instant, especially stories. Yeah. So stuff that's pre-recorded and I can tell it's pre-recorded, I'm always a bit... Yeah. I don't think... That, that to me doesn't feel true to the, the spirit the of it. Pla the platform. I, I think, think it should so, be yeah. raw, uncut, with all your screw-ups yeah, yeah. in it. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, cut your finger. Yeah. Let yeah. everybody know. Yeah, I and I like. I think that's what I like about what you do. Um, it is really, especially when you bring the missus into it, and she's totally caught off guard, and she's like looking at you like, "What are you, Steve? No, not now." And I like, I like that. I think that's what it is. It's, it is raw and it's real. And for me, like, it is a behind the scenes. Like, I watch it's like a behind the scenes of yeah. a film of a film set, and I just, I just find that incredible. What do you think's next for you, or what do you think is interesting or next that's going to be happening in Northern Ireland in that creative film production industry? Ooh. My head's gone completely so blank. Ballymena, yeah. Yeah. Film, scene, film scene in Ballymena. Then. Film scene in Ballymena, yeah. If you're in Belfast, you think Ballymena is where we keep the sheep. Yeah. Um, Which feature a lot in your stories. Yeah, our cows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah random animals. Um, Ballymena actually has a lot of really, really good designers, really good filmmakers. There's a small group of us up in that area, and there's a, there's a few people I would collaborate with now. Yeah. I think that works really well. I think more film makers are doing that rather than setting up larger businesses they're keeping it lean and just collaborating with specialists yeah. all over so where's next for me is i guess is building that up and then trying to do more and more of these little little mini movies okay that's what i really want to do and get local businesses on board um and it, it's figuring out how to do it and how to do it for uh, the but sort of sorts of budgets you tend to get yeah yeah even exactly. northern ireland in general and specifically in smaller towns yeah. and how to actually make money off it yeah so you can't you can't have an actor who says, okay, uh, I want you to buy me out for a year, and then after a year, we renegotiate it. Yeah, yeah. You just need people who are willing to, who like the idea themselves, who are willing to take part, they get paid, Yeah. Um, but they're happy for you to just use it. Yeah. Well, look, I'm excited to see where it goes, um, and just keep posting that stuff on Instagram, man, because it is, it is really, really funny to watch. <laughs> and really, from my perspective, it's inspiring to watch, because it, it keeps me thinking, create. It's all about making and creating your own stuff. I think that's that's what that's why you stand out in my head and that's what I enjoy about your content. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you coming down. No taking a little bit of time out of your day. Um, I had, I've been drinking tea by the way. I'm not gonna drink coffee the entire day, but the themes the themes there. Um, Steve is drinking decaf. Decaf. Caffeine makes me headachey. Yeah. Gives me insomnia and makes me very angry. Yeah, I can feel that. I get a 1 p.m. <laughs> coffee, no coffee, but we'll have to break that today. But um, no, I appreciate you coming down, man. Thank you. You're good. Cheers, man. Thanks. Cool.